Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another spirit review video. And today I'm going to be reviewing this Port Eskeg 110 proof bottling of a single malt scotch whiskey. I say a single malt scotch whiskey because it's technically undisclosed of what it is. Uh, but as far as this bottling line, this Port Eskeg name, this is the very first bottling of theirs to ever make it to the U.S. Um, all the other ones, like the 100 proof, all those age stated ones that they've released in the past, were for the UK and other markets. We never got them. So when I saw this one on the store shelves, just had to pick it up. And a retail pricing on it was only $60. Again, this does say single malt scotch whiskey on it, so we know it's from one distillery. Now, where is Port Eskeg? It's kind of on the northeastern side of Isla. It's a port there, very, very small town. And nearby, within a mile of that actual port, is Colila. A little further north, a couple more miles, a few more miles, I think it's like three or four, is Buna Haben. And so um, they like to bottle a lot of Colila under this name. And that's what we have in this bottle. It's a very, very young Colila. Uh, Portiskeg, they never do any chill filtering. They never add any color. So what you see is pretty much what you get. And what we have here is a very, very faint, almost straw, very light straw, uh, color so it's gonna pretty much tell us that it's either been on a very very tired barrel or it's young and this is gonna be young all right so again we got the retail pricing 60 and let's go ahead and get to the nosing wow right away what jumps out of the glass is it's buttery it's a lot of lemon zest and those are the first two things it's I mean, the peat smoke is definitely noticeable, and it's a very, very clean smoke. It's kind of a, it's almost meaty. It's not sooty or ashy smoke. Lots of brine coming out, so we're getting this salty sea air aspect. It's not really, it's not really fishy, so it's kind of like, a, it's not down on the beach where you might get some of that uh, fishiness going on. This is just the sea air. A little bit of vanilla a little banana and a good malt coming through on the nose. All those are kind of a, not the vanilla, but the, the banana and the malt is kind of a new mate characteristic. So a very, very young whiskey. All right, so now we go to the taste. Fantastic viscosity. At that price point, man, I'm going to say it's a medium above, or I say medium, almost medium high viscosity. And that buttery lemon oil thing that you're getting on the nose kind of comes through right away on the palate. It's fairly sweet. It's almost like a buttercream frosting type thing with lemon zest on top of it. A little salt thrown in there because the brine does come through on the palate. As far as that little bit of banana I was picking up on the nose, it's kind of in here, but it's very, very low, very faint. It's not like something you're just going to be, you know, keying on. Cinnamon is in there. It kind of gives you a nice warming cinnamon swell. And then <clears throat> the peat smoke that comes in, again, just like it knows, it's not really sooty or ashy or creosote or anything you know harsh it's it's very very nice and when you chew on it, it's clean peat smoke maybe a little bit of a meatiness to it but it's not like a mortlock or anything like that where it's this big heavy dense barbecue thing going on not like that this one's more focused to me it's more focused on the things that happen up front which is the buttery uh, butter frosting with that lemon zest it's kind of that sweetness that lingers throughout. And even though that smoke has a little bit of meat to it, it can't just overcome everything else. It's just so balanced in there. It does not drink 110 proof. I actually think this drinks closer to 100. But, and it's just because it's so creamy on the palate, it goes down so easily. Um, the one thing I will say is that I've had the 100 proof version and those extra 10 points of proof actually help that finish and help the flavors 
develop at a longer uh, amount of time and the finish just kind of keeps rolling. Now I have done some research on this bottle already with some friends and the one thing I'll say is that it handles water very very nicely. So even though it was not very much in that glass, four drops of water to it. And you think, man, you know, that might really kill some other whiskeys. But here, it just takes uh, the water great. It actually doesn't lose too much on the viscosity, so that's always a good thing. And the only thing I worried about initially when I added water to it was, you know, a lot of times when you add water to whiskeys, the tannins are either going to bump up too much and the wood's kind of jumping out, or the cinnamon becomes very sharp. Well, here we have a young Colila in the glass. So it hasn't had enough time in the barrels to get a lot of wood tannin. So I wasn't worried about that jumping out. I was kind of worried about the cinnamon sharpening. Uh, but man, no, it kind of just rounds and just gets very, very smooth. Let's see. Mm. Still viscous. Very, very nice. Yeah, the cinnamon level kind of lowers just a little bit. Everything else is still there. I think the banana that was fairly faint when neat with water kind of comes up a little bit more. That's a little more noticeable. Everything else remains the same. But to me, the one thing about this bottle is balance. It's so well balanced and it has a really nice sweet aspect to the smoke that, that again, butteriness, the lemon oils, all that just perfectly balanced. Great, great bottling at $60 if you enjoy Isla whiskeys. You have to like Pete, all right? Uh, but, man, if you see this out there on store shelves, don't be afraid to buy it if you do enjoy those type of whiskeys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. Keep leaving those great comments. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.